Hi everybody, this is Keith Perkins with a Fender Bender ADOS video sponsored by Autel. Today we're discussing a post-collision repair that would require us to perform an ADOS calibration. Now, specifically one which the IA900 is going to give us a big edge over time saved and skills used for other repairs. Now, something as routine as a suspension repair, a wheel alignment, even a small repair to the bottom part of a bumper like this one where simply a trim piece was damaged could easily prompt for an ADOS calibration. That's why it's important to always reference service information. Now, most of these modules are not sophisticated enough to let us know when they need to be calibrated. They won't set a light, a code, or alert the driver or technician in any way that this needs to be done. But service information is really clear about when these need to be calibrated. Now these are a more routine repair for any shop, especially a collision shop. So keeping these calibrations in the house are important so we can reduce cycle times. I don't really have time to send every vehicle to the dealer, so we've moved to doing all calibrations in house and have so for quite some time. So today in the shop, we have a 2015 Audi A8L Quattro TDI. And this had just a small repair on the front left of the, uh, the bumper assembly, the plastic trim there. And the radar did get moved and slightly adjusted when this happened. The trim bezel is all that was really damaged due to some debris in the road. But again, Audi's pretty specific since we've removed that trim panel and they were adjusted. Its physical alignment is moved. So now that radar is unaware of where it is physically in the world. Think about it like Battleship. It sees everything at B9, but the other radar and the camera and the LiDAR may see that at quadrant B7. So we're going to need to perform a calibration in order to get its zero point of where it sees everything in the rest of the world in the same spot. Because they're a radar, they use radio wave technology in order to determine direction of travel, speed, and trajectory of other components on the road. This is integral to most of the safety systems at the forward part of the vehicle, whether it be pre-collision or adaptive cruise control, automatic emergency braking, or any other sensor fusion system that works in conjunction with the rest of the sensors on the front of the car. So a repair like this is something that any shop could see, especially a collision center. So one of the tools we use here at L1 is the Autel IA900. Now this with the Ultra tablet kind of gives us the ultimate mashup of tools. So we've got a superior scan tool and an amazing calibration system that allows us to quickly set up the vehicle without most of the nuisances involved in typical calibration setup. We're able to put wheel clamps on this car and do it right here in the flat bay. Now this tool is also fully capable of performing alignments and that's what we use in the shop. But the four post is being used by another repair right now. So we're able to move the i 900 right here to the flat bay and perform this calibration almost anywhere in the shop. So let's jump right on over to the tablet and start the process. So we're gonna go ahead and select vehicle ID and auto detect. This will scan the multiple communication protocols in the vehicle to detect a VIN so we can start our process. So we've selected to automatically identify the vehicle. It's pulled the VIN. We're gonna press okay. Select the vehicle type. And that's all that we need to select for this particular vehicle. Depending upon the vehicle that you communicate with, you may need to answer other questions that are specific to the architecture and topology of that particular vehicle. Now we're going to go ahead and pull a full system scan. I expect to see some trouble codes in the adaptive cruise control and the camera module as those two use sensor fusion. Okay, yeah, as you can see, we've got a DTC in each of those. This vehicle has been driven around here at the lot multiple times in order for it to get back in the cycle for this particular calibration. Once I've got my pre-scan, I'm going to select report, report to cloud, so I can push this directly to our Adobe cloud. Now between the misalignment DTCs and knowing that it needs the calibration, we're going to go ahead and jump straight to the ADOS calibration. All right, so here's a list of all our ADOS systems. So we're going to go down to our distance regulation two, since that's the module that was adjusted. We're going to press the little ADOS target button next to it. We'll click OK. It says there needs to be at least 1200 millimeters or 47 inches. Now we've got a rather large amount of space here and luckily the door back behind me is far enough away outside of the detection area of the radars during the calibration. So we'll select yes. Now it's gonna give us a list of required calibration tools. As you can see, I went ahead and got the target clamps put on the vehicle itself already. Uh, I went ahead and placed the target on the front of the system here. It just slides right on. 
I've got the distance target set up over there, and the rest of everything else is ready to do this calibration. So we'll go ahead and click OK. And now we're going to set the vehicle up in the calibration mode to where it'll use the cameras on the frame and look at the wheel clamps to properly set the location of the frame. So the frame is going to automatically move and set its location to where it can see the cameras. Now it wants me to move the, the distance target at the front with the arrow pointing as close to the center of the vehicle as possible while touching the bumper assembly. So first things first, we need to move this frame forward to 1357. So we're gonna move it in a little ways here. Okay, now that we've set everything up correctly, we can press next. So we're gonna press okay. So it's gonna check DTCs in the J850 and the J428 and read out the misalignment angles. As you can see on the J850, we're at 0.8 degrees, which is right on the border. So we're gonna go ahead and do that physical alignment now. So there's a laser right in the center of the alignment target itself. So we can turn the laser on, move it over and then down until we get to the right location. Now, using the tools that came with our kit, we're gonna make the small adjustments to the radar until the two lasers align towards each other. Essentially, we have the target reflecting a laser onto a reflective surface on the radar beam itself. It actually comes back to the mirror so we're going to make an adjustment on the radar until the red dots line up both the reflective one here from the reflective surface here. Those are going to get the radar physically aligned to each other so they're correct. All right, so now that we've made our adjustment, let's go back over to the tablet and finish the calibration. Okay, after we made our few adjustments, it says adjustment was successful. The following misalignment angle will be reset. Press OK. It says it was reset. We'll press OK. And we'll go ahead and quit the program as the other one was within alignment. So the IE900 calibration stand, along with the Ultra tablet, gives us an experience that makes the entire process very easy. So thanks for joining us for this ADOS calibration. Remember, with tools like the IE900 and the Ultra tablet, your repair shops and your collision centers can do work in-house, just like we do here at L1. I hope you join us for the next one. <laughs>